It is said that a person's true character is tested when they're faced with hardships. Now that test becomes that much harder when the person facing the test is of a younger age. Now at the time of the demise of the Prophet Muhammad one of his most devoted followers who also happened to be a son was only 19 years of age. This of course was none other than Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmad anhu, who at the time of the demise of the Prophet Muhammad made the following oath. He said, O oh God, I stand here at the head of your Messiah and make this oath in your presence that even if this entire Jamaat leaves this cause, I will stand for this religion and for its propagation, the mission of which you started through the person of the promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome to another episode of Ahmadiyyat, Roots, Two Branches. I came merely to sow the seed. That seed has been sown by my hands. It will now grow and blossom forth, and none dare impede its growth. Ahmadiyyat, the true Islam, is the flourishing tree. But this is not just any tree. This is the tree, the seed of which was sown under the guidance of Allah Himself through the hands of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed of Qadian the promised Messiah and Imam Mahdi. Its miraculous growth in the midst of difficult and seemingly impossible circumstances is indeed a tale that is bound to increase one's faith, as if this is the tree that grew from concrete. Presently, under the guidance and leadership of our beloved Khalifa, Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmed, may Allah strengthen his hands, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat is now present and propagating the peaceful message of Islam in over 200 countries around the world. The Jamaat has built over 15,000 mosques, over 30 hospitals, and over 500 schools. It has translated the Holy Quran into over 70 languages. This is but merely a glimpse at the progress and a fraction of the achievements of Ahmadiyyat in only one single century. But this is Ahmadiyyat at present. Let us now take a step back and witness exactly how Ahmadiyyat, by the sheer grace of Allah, reached this point and attained these heights. For history is not only a means to understand and appreciate the present, but also a means to envision the future. Follow us on this journey. On today's episode of Rooster Branches, join us as we learn about the way in which Hazrat Muslim Ma'ud began receiving divine revelation at a very young age. We will then analyze a very focal turning point in the life of Hazrat Muslim Ma'ud which had to do with the demise of one of the Promised Messiah Islam's most devoted companions. We will then revisit the demise of the Promised Messiah Islam himself, doing so from the perspective of Hazrat Muslim Ma'ud and the great effect which it would have on him. And in the end, we will look at the amazing way in which God the Almighty himself taught Hazrat Muslim Ma'ud the meanings of Surah Al-Fatiha. But first, let us analyze the revival of the Anjuman Tashhiz al azhan which would progress and later on become a magazine by the name of Risala Tashhiz al azhan Anjuman Tashhiz al azhan was a well-established Anjuman, but Hazrat Muslim Maud Razila Tala Anho gave this Anjuman a new life in December of 1905. New rules and regulations were established, and the first ever Jalsa for the second era of this Anjuman was also held in September of 1906. At the event, both Hazrat Muslim Maud Razila Tala Anho and Hazrat Khalifatul Masih the first Razila Tala Anho delivered speeches. Now in March 1906, the Tashheez al-Azhan magazine began to be published. This magazine gave the Ahmadi youth new motivation to fervently work for the spread of Islam in Ahmadiyyat. Many topics were included in this magazine, such as matters pertaining to jurisprudence, sayings of the Promised Messiah 
and easy ways to learn Arabic. It should be noted that at this time, Hazrat Musleh Maud Anho was no more than 17 years old. His passion to work and serve for Islam and Ahmadiyyat was so great that not only did he write many articles about reformation, he also wrote many articles in response to allegations. Communion with God is the objective of every true believer, and yet so seldom achieved. For such a young Hazrat Muslim Maud Anhu to forge this relationship is truly astonishing. Umar, how many of us in this world can state that during the course of our lifetimes we receive revelation from God Almighty? You know, how many of us can state that at the young age of 15 or 16 we received revelation? Yet this adolescent, Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmed Sahib Raziallahu Anhu, received a revelation from God Almighty at the young age of 15 or 16 years old. And this revelation was, that surely those who will follow you will always prevail over those who disbelieve until the day of judgment. And we read that when Hazrat al Muslih al Maud became Khalifa and was appointed or anointed with this office of being the promised reformer, he, he writes that I first understood this revelation to indicate towards the office of my Khilafat, fulfilling that office. But when I was appointed with this title of Hazrat al Muslih al Maud, I realized that that first revelation also indicated the manifestation and fulfillment of my being the promised reformer. So at the young age of 15 or 16 years old, God Almighty is informing this child that he would perform such inspiring and astonishing service to the cause of Islam Ahmadiyyat. And this young child again is receiving revelation about revelations regarding or vouchsafed to his father, the promised Messiah, we read that on April 28th, 1905, an angel visited Hazrat Mizza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmed Sahib Raziallahu Anhu and informed him that your father just received this revelation, Inni mal afwaj atika baghtatan, that I am coming to your aid immediately with my forces. And the next day, Hazrat Mufti Muhammad Sadiq Sahib Raziallahu Anhu approached uh, this adolescent Hazrat Mizza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmed Sahib Raziallahu Anhu and uh, requested him to go to his father, the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wasalam, and write down all of the revelations and prophecies that this Prophet of God received the night prior. So of course, Hazrat Mizza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmed Raziallahu Anhu obeyed and approached his father and wrote down all of these revelations. And of course, expecting that this revelation, Inni mal afwa jatika baghtatan, would be one of these revelations, yet upon writing all of these revelations down, that revelation was not there. So, Hazrat Muslim Maud anhu leaves the room of his father, the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wasalam, completely unsure what to do. And we read that he, throughout the entire course of the day, would pace back and forth towards the door of his father, the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wasalam, just about to knock on the door, but fear gripped him and he was unable to, to do so. And this shows two beautiful facets uh, regarding the character of Hazrat Muslim Maud at such a young age. Number one, the indignation that this adolescent, that this child had for his father, that his father could not be wrong, that his father was divinely guided. Yet, this child was so determined in clarifying this dilemma that God could not deceive this child, that if this, it was told that this revelation was vouchsafed to the promised Messiah, to this child, then it had to be so. So of course, Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmed Raziallahu Anhu plucked up the courage and knocked on the door and asked his father whether this revelation was vouchsafed to him last night. And the promised Messiah Islam's eyes lit up, remembering that yes, indeed, this revelation was vouchsafed to him, told him that yes, it was. And he opened up his notebook and lo and behold, it was there. You know, so the, the close and intimate relationship that this young adolescent had with God Almighty is, is so prevalent throughout the course of his early life to the extent that, Umar, we read that this child was mentioned in the books of the promised Messiah, 
Exactly. And Azim Sima Allah mentions him in Al Wasiyat, which he wrote in 1905, which is translated to the will. So in this book, Azim Sima Allah has written various revelations that uh, he was vouchsafed towards the end of his life regarding the future of the Jamaat. And one particular one, which relates to the, pro the promised son, is that Azim Sima Allah writes that God has vouchsafed to me that I will raise someone from your progeny who would further the cause of your Jamaat. And he would establish the truth. And many people from far and wide would accept your Jamaat and the truth at his hand. So we see the affirmation of the original prophecy, which was vouchsafed in 1886, and then published in the Green Announcement in 1888, again testified and very powerfully uh, delivered to the Prophet Wasallam again, so that people would remember that this son has arrived and he would further the cause of his father, the Promised Messiah Wasallam, And this son uh, would be the cause of the manifestation of God's grandeur and power and the truth would be, man uh, truth would be manifested through him. And this is exactly what Hazrat Musaim Allah Salatu Wasalam has written uh, in his book Al Wasiyat. Hazrat Mulvi Abdul Karim Sayal Koti Taala Anhu was one of the most devoted and prominent companions of the Promised Messiah Allah Salatu Wasalam. Now he passed away on October 11th, 1905. And regarding this, Hazrat Muslim Maud Taala Anhu has written in his own words. He says that, you know, as a youngster, I didn't really have an extensive relationship with Sayal Koti Sahib Taala Anhu. You know, when I was young, I took a few classes from him, but I stopped going to those. And uh, during his days of illness, uh, I took Sayal Koti Sahib Razila Ta'ala no some soup. So this was kind of the extent of my relationship with Mulvi Abdul Karim Sayal Koti Razila Ta'ala Anho. Now, he says, just like everyone else, I realized and I understood that Mulvi Abdul Karim Sahib Sayal Koti Razila Ta'ala Anho had an amazing voice and he was a very profound lecturer. He gave many of the lectures of the Promised Messiah and amongst the youngsters there was this debate as to who was the right hand angel and who was the left hand angel of the Promised Messiah between Hazrat Hakim Mulvi Nuruddin Sahib and Hazrat Mulvi Abdul Karim Sahib Sayal Koti So this was kind of the relationship, you know, not very extensive which Hazrat Muslim Maud had with him. So on the day, Hazrat Muslim Maud writes that on the day when I heard of the demise of the passing of Mulvi Abdul Karim Sahib Sayal Koti For some reason, this took a huge toll upon me and I became very emotional. He says, I immediately ran to my room, I closed the door and I fell upon my bed like a lifeless body and cried and I, I cried a stream and I kept crying and crying. And when the Promised Messiah saw this, he himself was surprised. He said that uh, Mia Mahmud did not have an extensive relationship with uh, Mulvi Abdul Karim Sahib Sayal Koti no? Why has this taken such a toll upon him? And if he keeps crying like this, uh, he will become sick. So Hazrat Muslim Maud no, continues to write that, you know, it was on this day specifically that I noticed a great change within myself. He says that from this day forward, you know, my attention was focused more towards religious matters, towards more spiritual matters, and I, I took a fondness in these things. And he says that it is almost as if from that day forward, the spirit or, you know, the 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 devotion and the compassion uh, which Hazrat Mulvi Abdul Karim Sahib Sayal Koti had was within me now and his spirit had you know, transferred into me. Any child naturally grieves at the death of their parent and Umar Hazrat Muslim Anhu was no different. This young man not only lost a father on that faithful day, he lost his spiritual master, his prophet of God, yet this young servant of God showed incredible resolve. And this resolve was born out of God's mercy, in fact. As God had started preparing Hazrat Muslim Anhu for this devastating grievance in his life, Hazrat Muslim Anhu himself writes that in those days we had traveled to Lahore where Hazrat Sima Allah would come to pass. And I felt an extreme uneasiness and burden overtake me. Especially the day before Hazrat Sima Allah's passing, I felt that I shouldn't even ride the horse. So I sat in uh, a car, and as I, as I sat down, uh, a condition overtook me, and I received a revelation. He says that I received the revelation, Razi ham usi me jisme teri razaho, that we are content with that which contains your pleasure. So God was preparing him for this 
grievance and, and telling him that you should put your trust in, in, in me. And that's exactly what Hazrat Muslim Ma'ud Muslim Ma'ud Anhu did. As Hazrat Masih Ma'ud Salaam passed, it was a devastating moment for the entire Jamaat, but especially for his own son. Umar, um, Hazrat Muslim Ma'ud Anhu himself writes that no one in the community at the time expected that the promised Messiah Islam, would die. Um, it was just completely out of the minds of the community. Uh, to the extent that youngsters in the Jamaat would uh, request the promised Messiah Islam, to pray at the funeral prayer uh, of these youngsters because they imagined that he, he just wouldn't die anytime soon. This man was a prophet of God. This man was so important to their lives that it was unimaginable. It was so hard to imagine that he would not be in their lives. Um, yet, that fateful day came to pass when the promised Messiah in Lahore passed away. It was incredibly difficult, I'm sure, for young Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmoud Ahmed Sahib anhu, to stand by the body of his father, the promised Messiah Yet, the resolve that he showed was nothing but descended from God Almighty Himself. And the promise that this young servant of God made to his father and to God standing by his father's body was also nothing but descended and inspired from God Almighty Himself. He stated that even if the entire world were to abandon you and stand in enmity against you, I would stand alone by your side and I would safeguard you. I would contest them. And who can argue that Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmed Sahib anhu, did not do this. He fulfilled this promise with every word he spoke, with every breath he took, with every action in his lifetime. He spread the Jamaat in a manner that was unseen. It was revolutionary. Um, no one can deny the, the fruits of his labor and the fulfillment of that promise that he made to his father on that day. Hazrat Muslim Maud Razila Anho was 18 years old at the time when he saw in a dream that he was in a large and open field. He looked up and saw what seemed to be a picture frame forming in the sky. From this picture frame emerged an angel who came to him and said that I am an angel of God and I have come to teach you the commentary of Surah Fatiha the angel began teaching Hazrat Muslim Maud Razila Tala Anho the commentary of Surah Fatiha. But when they reached the verse, Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'in, the angel stopped and said that until today, no one has been taught past this verse. Shall I continue? Hazrat Muslim Maud Razila Tala Anho agreed. And just like that, the angel taught Hazrat Muslim Maud Razila Tala Anho the commentary of Surah Fatiha. Now, although Hazrat Muslim Maud Razila Anho did not write down everything that he had learnt that night from the angel, he says that every time I have to speak about Surah Fatiha or when I ponder over the Holy Quran in general, I am revealed new meanings of every verse by God Almighty, such that have never been heard before. And with that, we've come to the end of this episode of Ahmadiyyat, Roots, Two Branches. The purpose of today's episode was to see how the Anjuman Tashiz al azhan was revived and through the efforts of Hazrat Muslim Maud Razila it would branch out into a magazine known as Risala Tashiz al azhan We then saw how at a very young age, Hazrat Muslim Maud Razila began receiving divine revelation from God the Almighty. And then how at the time of the demise of the Promised Messiah, Hazrat Muslim Maud Razila understood and realized the fact that he was to carry on the message and the mission which was given to the promised Messiah from God the Almighty. And then in the end, we saw how in a very extraordinary way, God the Almighty, uh, through divine revelation, taught Hazrat Muslim Maud Razila Anho the various meanings of the Holy Quran. So with that, Jazakumullah for watching. Until next time, when by the grace of God, Ahmadiyyat will have branched out even further. Assalamu alaikum. हर चार सुह है शोहरा 
Oh 